For the first time in history, we have seen the emergence of vast cities in places that are both poor and sadly sometimes poorly governed. These mega cities offer both tremendous possibilities of economic prosperity, of growth and development, but also tremendous challenges, including the spread of contagious disease, of traffic congestion, of violent crime. Getting these cities right may be the most important vocation of the 21st century. So the Cities That Work initiative is organized into themes. You start with the physical land of the city. And the critical thing in land is getting to something that feels like it's formal titling. If you're ever going to actually fund a city, you need property ownership to get property taxes. If you're going to have regulations that require people to actually use sanitary facilities, you need to have ownership as well. And if you're going to empower ordinary citizens to, to change their city, they need to have a sense of owning it. The key point about infrastructure is, one, it's really easy to waste billions of dollars on infrastructure. Two, it's really necessary. And three, you could never think about it in, on its own. Infrastructure is one of these areas where it is so easy to get massively wrong um, because the amounts of money involved are enormous. The great lesson from New York infrastructure in the 19th century was engineering wasn't enough. In 1842, New York built the Croton Aqueduct, which brought the clean waters of upstate down to the city, but the death rates didn't decline because poor people weren't connecting. And for 25 years after the Croton Aqueduct opened, New York still had cholera epidemics. My great-great-great-great-grandfather died in the 1849 cholera epidemic, and the reason for this was the last mile problem. Poor New Yorkers weren't willing to pay for the connections to the Croton Aqueduct, and consequently they continued to, to die. It wasn't until you had rules, in fact you had to impose penalties on poor people who didn't connect, that you actually got the sanitary problem solved. The key point on housing is that you don't want the perfect to be the opposite of the good. You want to think about housing in the developing world as likely to be relatively transitory because, in fact, any housing that's built for India in 2017 is almost surely going to be completely inappropriate for India in 2037. You should plan with building materials that aren't necessarily geared towards permanence. And just as importantly, you need rules that are flexible. You need land use regulations that don't artificially straitjacket your building into low floor area ratios and, and lower density levels. You need to make sure that cities can grow up as they grow old. The big lesson about firms is you don't want to try and micromanage entrepreneurship. I often say the right economic development strategy for cities is to attract and train smart people and then get out of their way. Training people is the most important thing that governments do. Nothing is more important than education. But then at the same time, it's important to know when to let go. Too many of our developing world cities and our developed world cities over-regulate entrepreneurship, make it impossible to start new firms and make it impossible to grow, to move from being a small family-run firm that largely ignores the rules to being a larger firm employing people, we need to make sure that there aren't too many regulations that stop that growth, that stop firms from turning into jobs machines. Cities need to provide services. They need to deal with traffic, they need to deal with public health, they need to deal with safety, and they need to pay for those. The question is, where does that money come from? And I think the large lesson is that it's best when cities pay for themselves. And the most natural way of doing it is usually property taxes or land taxes. So you don't tax the thing that can run away, you tax the land that's fixed there. And in that way, cities can pay for their own needs. And in fact, the property owners who benefit from those city services actually fairly pay for the city services that they get. Cities That Work is both a research network and a larger community that combines public leaders throughout the developing world. It's an attempt to learn from the researchers, but it's also an attempt to learn from the wisdom of public leaders and to bring them together and to bring forth the best things that can be done to make the cities of the world more livable. Cities are capable of enormous magic, of empowering individuals and strengthening economies. For cities to experience that magic, to do their job, they need to have robust governments that deal with the demons that come with density. Cities that work in an attempt to empower those governments to be part of a solution to make this urban magic that brings people out of poverty and gives them a brighter future. Thank you.